Hi, so today we're going to be working on something called clock problems, all right? And so the thing about clock problems is you have to have a really good visual on the clock and specifically what time we're talking about, and then also specifically how, um, how these problems specifically work. So this is how they'll normally uh, be set up. So it'll be like, how long will it take after some time for the hour hand and the minute hand of a clock to first align? So the first thing I like to do on these is kind of sketch out the clock, right? And it doesn't have to be a good sketch. It just has to get a, a good idea of what the clock looks like in my head. So I know for 3.30, right, I've got my clock. And then I've got 12 and 3, 6, and 9 in this direction. So my hour hand is going to be pointed probably something like this, right? And then since it's uh, 30 my minute hand will be pointed straight down, right? Uh, let me make that a little bit better, yeah. So we've got my minute hand right here and my hour hand right here. And so what's gonna happen is that my minute hand actually moves faster than my hour hand, right, obviously? So this minute hand will travel all the way around back to this hour hand. That's what, that's what we're wanting to know, right? How long until that minute hand catches up to that hour hand, right? So what we need to do now is find out which hand is in front. And since we've drawn our picture, it's pretty simple to see that this minute hand is in front of this hour hand, right? So it turns out that depending on which hand is in front, we actually do a different calculation. So um, for this hand, for this calculation, we're going to want to do the following, um, the following calculation. All right. So. Uh, I'm going to just call this the min calculation because it's for the min if it's in front, right? And if the minute hand is in front of the hour hand, we're going to do 60 over 11 times the next hour. We'll call that uh, n for next hour. And then add the time until the next hour. So add, we'll call this uh, t, right? In this case, it'll be 60 over 11 times 4 plus 30, right? So let's go over to our calculator and go 60 over 11 times 4 plus 30. And this should be how long it will take for the uh, minute hand to run all the way around and get to the hour hand. So we hit enter and our answer is 51.8. So our answer right here is 51.8. And that is our answer to this question. All right, so this question is very similar to the last question we did. Instead of it being 3.30, it's 3.22. And in fact, we can just use the same methodology, same equation, and do the same thing, except instead of using 3.30, we're going to be using 3.32. Sorry, 3.22. So again, what we're going to want to do first is draw our clock, right? And it's going to look something a little bit like this, right, with our three hour hand and then our 22 minute minute hand pointing something like that right all we know that is our minute hand is in front of our hour hand right so we're going to use our minute equation so this is for a minute again and it is 60 over 11 times next hour plus time till next hour or t so in this case all it is is 60 over 11 times 4 plus the time till next hour which should be 38 because there's 60 minutes in an hour 22 uh, subtracted from 60 is 38 so 60 over 11 times 4 next hour plus 38 is equivalent to 59.8 so our answer is 59.8 and there we go that's our answer all right so for this question it says it is 425 on my clock how much time will elapse before the minute and hour hands line up for the second time? All right, so let's draw our clock. Oops, sorry, let's draw our clock. And then so we've got four pointing to about there or so. Actually, sorry, it's an hour hand, so it'll be shorter. Four pointing to about there or so. And then 25 pointing, uh, well, 5, 10, 15, 25. So... 425 will be pointing something like that, right? Or maybe a little bit closer to uh, 
something like that. So uh, we've got our minute hand and we've got our hour hand. So what's what's going to happen in this? It says how much time will elapse before the minute and hour hands line up for the second time? So this um, minute hand is going to run all the way around and then meet back up with that hour hand to where they're touching, right? So the thing is, the thing that you have to realize about this question is no matter where the minute hand and hour hands are, if they're touching each other, right? It's going to be the same amount of time for them to go all the way around and meet up if they start from here, right? So it doesn't matter if they're angled like this, where they're up there or if they're down here or any kind of version if you start them off and they're touching it's going to be the same amount of time uh, no matter what kind of orientation you're using so what we're going to have to do and if they start sorry and if they start off where they're touching it's going to be 60 over 11 times 12 that's just you got to know it's it's one of those things where it's just like how many ounces are in a gallon? 128. It's just kind of one of those unit conversion kind of things almost. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate how long it takes for the minute hand to catch up to the hour hand and then add in this 60 over 11 times 12. Okay. So in order to do that, uh, let's look back at our original clock. And our original clock is pointed at 425 and it has our minute hand in front of our hour hand. So we're going to use 60 over 11 times n plus t. So writing in our um, respective numbers for this, it'll be 60 over 11 times 5 plus 35. So let's go to our calculator and do just that. 60 over 11 times 5 plus 35. So there is our answer for the first part of our question, 62.27, right? However, this doesn't factor in the second time that they line up, right? This is just the first time because it's only calculating when they meet up. It's not counting them meeting up and then continuing on and then touching for the second time, right? So what we gotta do is add in that, um, that value that I just talked about. So this value plus 60 over 11 times 12. And the reason we do the 60 over 11 times 12 is because we're calculating for that second time. We are, this first part over here is the first time, but the 60 over 11 times 12 is calculating for that second time. And if it was a third time, we just add another 60 over 11 times 12 and so on and so forth. But in this case, it's only the second time, so we only need to add one. So we hit enter, and so our answer is 127.7 minutes or 120. Oh, sorry. 128 minutes. So that is your answer to this question. All right. So for this question, we go like this. A clock face reads 910. How long will it take the minute hand to align with the hour hand? Nothing special with this one. Let's just draw our clock. All right. So we know that our hour hand is going to be put just a little bit in front of 9, right? So it's going to look something like that. And then we know our minute hand is going to be um, at 10, right? So it'll be over here. All right, so in this one, uh, unlike the previous ones, our hour hand is actually in front of our minute hand. And the way you can think of this is um, the minute hand and the hour hand are always in a race, right? And the thing is, is the race can only go this way because it's clockwise, right? Clocks don't go counterclockwise. They go this way. So in this case, the hour hand would be in front of the minute hand because they can only go this way, right? So in this case, our hour hand is actually in front. So now we can use our hour calculation. And this is the first time we get to use it in this video so far. Um, all right. So our hour calculation is 60 over 11 times our current hour. We'll call that C. And then minus current minutes, which I'll call M. So in this case, it would be 60 over 11 times 9 minus 10. And now going to our equation, we will have 60 over 11 times 9, our current hour, minus our current minutes, 10. 
And our answer is 39.1. And that would be our answer to this question. All right. This question is just like the last couple ones. Let's just dive right into it. How many minutes after 10.10 do the minute and hour hands on a clock first line up? So, just like all the other ones, we're going to want to draw our clock to see which one lines up first, the minute hand or the hour hand. So, uh, the hour hand would be about something like that or so, because, again, 10 o'clock all the way 3, 6, 9, 10 should be about there or so, right? It doesn't have to be exact, you know, just as long as you know which one's in front, either the minute hand or the hour hand. So now let's draw our minute hand. Our minute hand is going to be over here because 5, 10, and then boom, there's our minute hand. So again, obviously, the race can only be ran this way, so our hour hand is in front. So we get to use our hour calculation yet again. So hour hand is 60 over 11 times C, current hour, uh, minus current minutes, M. And in this case, it'll be 60 over 11 times 10 minus 10. Now let's go to our calculator and just do that. 60 over 11 times 10 minus 10 should get our answer. And 44.5 is the correct answer. All right. Guys, it really just boils down to three simple steps. Number one, draw your clock. And it doesn't have to be an exact clock. You just have to know three, six, nine, and get a general idea and be able to define where your hands are. Because your hands then justify which calculation you're going to use in the very end. So really, it just boils down to drawing the clock doing the correct hands, and then finding the correct calculation. At that point, all you have to do is just plug in your two values, and then that is your answer. Again, guys, uh, this is Reese, and let me know if you have any questions about this, um, or just email me them, and I'll see you in the next video.